So, uh, I would uh, like to start from by explaining every every word in my title. So, uh, in this short talk, I would like uh, to tell you a little bit about the almost Matthew operator. This is a bounded self-adjoint operator defined on L to Z by H acts on some on a sequence in L to Z as psi n plus one plus psi n minus one, which is exactly uh, the discrete field Laplacian plus the potential lambda cosine two pi alpha n plus theta psi n, where alpha, lambda, and theta are some real numbers. This operator is one of the most studied concrete models of the operators of this form, namely the free Laplacian plus the potential, which I will denote by V alpha lambda theta. I will denote its spectrum by sigma alpha lambda theta, and this is the set of all of real E's for which the operator H minus E is not invertible. Did, did this come up in, uh, in some physical systems? Yeah, this actually uh, an electron in magnetic field. I'm not really an expert in physical sense, but right. shortly this is. So this is the wave function of the electron. Yeah. Um, if alpha. So it's a two dimensional model, uh, right? It's a two dimensional model where you have a magnetic yeah. field. Yeah. And then it's reduced to this to a one dimensional model. So it's the motion of a two dimensional electron in a magnetic field perpendicular to the subspace on mm -hmm. a periodic background, and this alpha is the amount of flux. Magnetic flux, yeah, exactly. And the uh, theta I is the phase. They used to say it's the rings of Saturn. But <laughs> <laughs> is that nonsense? Well, I don't think so. <laughs> if alpha is a rational number, p over q, and I always will assume that p is smaller than q and that p and q are relatively prime, then the sequence V alpha lambda theta is periodic of period Q. And if alpha is irrational number, then the sequence is almost periodic. Which means, roughly, that if you're looking at some piece of the sequence that's somewhere far enough, we can find an almost the same piece. The only thing from, <laughs> at least from my title, which is still not explained, is the word critical. And the almost Matthew operator is called critical for the case that the absolute value of lambda equals to two. And the name comes from what we know today, is that for any lambda which is smaller than two, the spectrum is purely absolutely continuous. And for any lambda which is greater than two, the spectrum is pure point spectrum. Another important thing that we know today, which is a result of an intensive work of numerous researchers, some of them are here, uh, over past 30 years is the following elegant simple theorem, not simple but elegant, is that for any irrational alpha and lambda differs from zero, the spectrum is a counter set in, in the sense that this is nowhere than set with no isolated points of the Lebesgue measure equal to absolute value four minus two times absolute value of lambda. In particular, uh, for the critical case, what? 
Hey, I'm saying for all and I'm writing there exists. There exists will be now. <laughs> um, in particular, in the critical case, the spectrum is a contour set of zero Lebesgue measure, and therefore the question about its fractal dimensions naturally arises. There are different notions of fractal dimensions. Most of them coincide for a nice set. The ones that will appear in this talk, they're Hauser dimension, which is smaller than or equal than box counting dimension. The result that I want to present here is the result of Lust and myself from 2008. And we proved the following. We proved that there exists a G delta dense set of alphas for which the Hausdorff dimension of the spectrum of the critical almost Matthew operator is equal to zero. Oh, that's <laughs> exactly why I looked at the board because I remember that I forgot to tell something. In this case, it is a fundamental fact that the spectrum is independent of theta But this is not true for the case that alpha is a rational number. Therefore, in our theorem, needless to say that it's for all theta, since it's about irrational alphas. So uh, first of all, what I would like to tell you now is uh, a little bit about the previous work on this subject and about several open, on open questions. A variety of numerical results and uh, heuristic arguments were published, most of them during the 80s, some of them during also 90s, supporting the conjecture that the box counting dimension of the spectrum of the critical almost Smati operator is equal to half for almost every irrational alpha. However, in 94, Wilkinson and Austin provided a numerical evidence that for alpha, which is golden mean, the box counting dimension of the spectrum of the critical almost matium is approximately 0 0.498, so on, which is strictly smaller than half. <laughs> uh, I will more than happy to define it uh, uh, after the talk. This is ba basically speaking about the covers. I just don't want to take the time. And therefore, they made a conjecture uh, that actually the box counting dimension of the spectrum of the critical uh, almost matium is strictly smaller than half for all irrational alpha. <coughs> they also provided a numerical and analytic evidence Uh, they did it in two, in two ways, and one of them was the normalization group, yeah. They also provided a numerical and analytic evidence that for irrational alphas of the form alpha n equal to 1 over n plus 1 over n plus 1 over n, so on, the box counting dimension of the spectrum of the critical almost Matthew tends to zero when n tends to infinity. Therefore, it became clear that different irrationals should lead to completely different fractal properties of the spectrum. And the characterizing the fractal dimension of the spectrum is a very rich subject. However, the only rigorous result that we are aware of is due to last from 94 
in which he proved that if Qn to the fourth times alpha minus Pn over Qn smaller than some constant, where Pn over Qn is some sequence of rationals that converges to the alpha, then the Hausdorff dimension of the critical almost Matthew is smaller than or equal to half. And although the set of alphas in this result is a generic set from the topological point of view, being G delta then set, it's still a set of zero Lebesgue measure. Now what I would like to do is to tell you briefly about the main idea behind this result. Uh, one of the popular and effective approaches to study the almost periodic case is through the periodic one. In this case, as I already mentioned, the spectrum does depend on theta. And in order to approximate uh, a spectrum for an irrational alpha, we need to have some set which continuously depends on alpha and coincides with the spectrum for an irrational alpha. And the right notion will be, I will denote it by S, and this is the union over all of thetas of the spectrum for an individual theta. And from now on, I will once again assume only that alpha is rational number, p over q, and as I already said, I'm assuming that p is smaller than q, and p and q are relatively prime. The basic structure of this set is well understood. It is a union of q-closed intervals, that often called bands, and they are disjoint, except for the case that q is even. In this case, two central bands touch us by the edges. The total length, the approximation of the total length, namely of the Lebesgue measure of the set, is also known. This is a result of last from 94, which says that the Lebesgue measure is smaller than 8e over q, when e is just an exponent, 2.71, greater than 2 times square root of 5 plus 1 over q. But all this knowledge about the basic structure of the spectrum is not enough in order to obtain any result of this type. One needs to know more. One needs to know the distribution of the lengths of the bands. And this is actually the critical point. And I, I will explain what I mean by distribution of the lengths on two examples. First one, is the kind an intuition which is behind the half conjecture. Suppose we are constructing a contour set on an interval 0, 1 as follows. We remove q minus 1 gaps in the way that the total length of the bands is approximately 1 over q, which is from the result of last. And the length of each band is approximately 1 over q squared. So all the lengths are even. Now we continue in the same way. From each band, we remove q minus 1 gaps. So the total length of the bands is approximately 1 over q, relatively. And the length of each band is approximately 1 over q squared. Once again, relatively. Continuing this way, we obtain a counter set which have an exact half a Hausdorff and box counting dimension. So this example gives us kind of an intuition that in order to obtain a strict inequality, and in particular in order to obtain zero, one needs completely different distribution of the lengths of the bands. And therefore I brought a different picture, which is a I think the most beautiful picture in this business, which called Hofstadter's butterfly. And first, in general, what we see on this picture. The horizontal axis is the axis of E, from minus 4 to 4. The vertical axis is the axis of alphas, from 0 to 1. What we see here is the set S alpha 2 for rational alphas, 
with denominators smaller than or equal to 50. But let us take a little bit closer look. What we actually see is the following. Consider some rational number p over q, fixed rational number. And consider some sequence of rational numbers that converges to this rational number. 